Welcome to Talking Wow, the podcast where we talk about World of Warcraft. My name is Tom, and on this episode of Talking Wow, we're going to be talking about becoming a Wow Daddy. Now, what does that mean? Does it have something to do with Pedro Pascal? Hopefully, but don't get your hopes up too much. I am joined by a very special guest and a good friend of mine, all the way from across the pond, as we like to say. Hey, Mike, a.k.a. Acid Tears. A.k.a. a very close second to Pedro Pascal. So you're getting very <laughs> close to the main to the main course. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the, the budget couldn't cover uh, Pedro Pascal, but it could stretch to Mike. So thank you very much for being here, Mike. I'm happy to be here. Um, it's always a good time to jump on the mic and talk some World of Warcraft. Absolutely. And something our listeners might not know is that me, you, and my other co-host for this podcast, who's not here for this episode today, Marty. We used to actually podcast together. Can you believe that? It feels like a lifetime ago. It does. Um, we've done several different projects together, uh, the three of us together. And then I know that me and Marty did some stuff together separate. And here, here we are, almost full circle. And you and Marty have started up yet another project. And I'm just glad that you guys reached out and... I'm happy to be here once again. Absolutely, because we always enjoy your perspectives on things. Unfortunately, this isn't a podcast about everything Blizzard, so we're not going to be able to hear your hot takes on StarCraft today. <laughs> but what we are going to be talking about is World of Warcraft, and that's lucky because this is called Talking Wow. But something big has happened in your life in the last year, Mike. And it wasn't just the release of Dragonflight coming along and potentially saving World of Warcraft from disaster. Something bigger than that has happened for you, right? That's right. Um, I made a big decision to cut out a lot of the Taco Bell that I was eating in order to live a healthier <laughs> lifestyle. So that has been transformative to say the least. Uh, but no, no, actually, <laughs> um, actually, yes, me and my wife, uh, we had a baby and she's uh, sitting here beside me. She may make an appearance or two on this episode uh, verbally. So if you <laughs> we are hoping for that, that that's really why I invited you, because it's not really your opinion. I want to hear I want to hear your baby's opinion on World of Warcraft, of course. No, trust me, if she says anything right now, it's going to sound like a rage fit. Um, just looking at her, her pacifier is upside down, so she moved it upside down, and I, I'm just going to leave it there for now. <laughs> I don't want to wake the beast. That's her podcasting face, Mike. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen it. It's the first podcast I think I've done since uh, since she's been around for the last seven months. So. so yeah, your life completely changes, and much like everyone that has a child, your priorities change, mm -hmm. and everything is... I assume just completely different. It's like one minute you, you don't have this precious life to care for and then the next you do. And your priorities, of course, are going to, to change. And I think as World of Warcraft players, sometimes we do have a bit of a, a, a strange perspective on our priorities because we dedicate a lot of time to playing games like World of Warcraft or MMOs. And we have characters in those games that we think very closely of and we want to improve and, and get better with. But when you go outside of that, it's like, oh, human life and uh, that responsibility. I know you've been a big World of Warcraft player for many, many years, and it's been an important part of your life. I know you have a, a, a close-knit community with your guild as well, mm -hmm. and you enjoy raiding. What has that been like since the birth of your daughter? Like, How has things changed for you? Um, not much has really changed. It's more of like, imagine a room that you set up and then uh, like a, a tornado comes into that room and it just shuffles a couple things around. <laughs> you, you know, it's just a little bit of a shift, but you can deal with it. Uh, no, <laughs> everything, everything has completely changed in terms of um, what I do in game, how much time I can put in game, the things I have to take into consideration whenever I want to play in game. I do love that you bring up a little bit about what like that I've played for quite a while because this is actually the character that I started the game with. He looked a little bit different. I figured it'd be nice to bring him here. Um, he actually started off as a giant cow. 
So for audio listeners, what is this character? Okay, so right now, the character's name is Phil Brust, and he is a paladin dwarf. Um, but he had humble beginnings as a giant Toran paladin, <laughs> a member of the Horde. Just gonna, I just gotta rename this episode uh, from Mulgore to Stormwind: <laughs> A Tale of the Holy Light. You know, sometimes people go through transformations in their life, and they feel a certain way inside that doesn't reflect on the outside. And I am a huge supporter of people reflecting of themselves. So the the mighty Torin decided to become a mighty dwarf, and the story unfolded such didn't have anything to do with the fact that a bunch of people made a guild on alliance and he didn't have an alliance character so (laughs) um yeah so this character is my first one if only there had been cross-faction guilds mike oh Uh, if only or if i actually knew how to play the game so i was like oh i've already leveled this this cow to level 30 i don't want to have to go through all of that again no (laughs) no 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 absolutely not so you're saying Everything has changed. Everything has changed, and of course, of course, it would have because, like, you you've had a kid. That's the answer I would have expected. <laughs> I know you're you're a big raider as well, and like that is something that you've you've said to me. Like that is something that brings you some of the most enjoyment mm-hmm. in the game because you're connecting with other players in there. And I think a lot of us are of that opinion that with our guilds and our communities in this game like that is what makes world of warcraft and i guess i'm just interested on your raiding playing habits now because your your priority has changed like it no longer is it like oh i want to get that boss killed it's changing diapers and and things like that and you know that's your (laughs) that's your raid boss now but how, how has how has that been for you how have you adjusted to to life Essentially, WoW has become a scheduled event in terms of I've actively had to communicate with my wife about when I intend to raid. And then work took a a change as well. So work dug into raid time too. Uh, So in order to be able to raid consistently, I'm pretty much only able to make half of our raid night. (laughs) Um, and I had to come to an agreement with my wife that she would be able to watch the baby for that portion. So before then, it'd just be like, yeah, what time are we meeting up? If I had to work, then I had to work, but I could be like, I'd stay late if people wanted to. I'd do Mythic Plus all the time whenever I log in, be like, people hit me up. Yeah, let's do some Mythic Plus. Let's go ahead and run it. Oh, you want to do another one? Let's go ahead and do that. I can't do that now. Unfortunately, it's actually very difficult for me to meet some of the requirements um, for the raid. I'm very low on the DPS meters right now, primarily because I just don't have the time to do all of the extra things necessary to properly gear up. So it's a good thing that I'm with a guild that is fairly casual um, and understanding, but still has like some pumpers on the team. So when I'm there... It's just, I'm there to hang out, and they're just, like, kind of pulling me along, and if I happen to do pretty well on the meters, then it's just like, okay, like, hey, I saw my name for a little bit, that was fun. Uh, But when we went through normal mode, and my daughter was a newborn, she slept a lot more, so it was just, like, raid night, and I was... The soothing sounds of raiding, there we go. That's right, and it was, um, it was good. I was able to raid completely all the way through i was putting up good numbers getting gear and then the shift happened where she decided um yeah i don't feel like sleeping as much anymore and i want to be awake and i'm gonna yell at you if uh, you're not looking at me just just yelling at your dps meter just like that's not good enough mike come on you you gotta push it harder yeah and you can't just tell her that well it's your fault <laughs> that's not <laughs> how it works so one of the reasons why I wanted to bring up this topic with you because I think it's quite interesting that when we have moments in our life that totally change the the landscape, and that's not necessarily just having a kid, there can be loads of things in our life that do that or take our attention away from the things that we are passionate about, or that we are geeky about. And I think it's still realizing that you can still find places and times to still embrace those geeky passions and also i know that a lot of people when they're growing up and they have parents that are into certain things like star wars or or a certain video game or something like that 
that stuff can be really influential mm -hmm. for your kids as well. And I know your daughter's still quite young, but have you had any experiences so far where potentially she's like, registering on something that you are doing in the geeky sphere um definitely not necessarily in the wow sphere um i have had her sit on my lap while i played for a little bit uh, but then she just kept smashing the space bar and making my character jump and i wasn't doing pvp <laughs> so it wasn't that important i did have an experience playing elden ring where she put her hands on the controller and she was moving the stick around so i let her do it um until she walked my character off a cliff died and then she proceeded to cry so I think she registered something there. I think she registered something. That's that is a gamer in the making right there, and just having that, just having that partner to uh, to share that with. And I think I guess that's like really special for you as well. Like these are early like bonding moments for you and your daughter as well. And like we're not gonna lie, like video games are a big passion, big passion in your life, and like you've grown up with video games and that's something that's going to be like part of your household. I know your mm -hmm. wife is a big gamer as well. So it is just like a big geeky sphere that your daughter has been born into. And I, for one, I'm looking forward to seeing like many, many years down the road, like how geeky your daughter becomes or, or not, because mm -hmm. you know, it's everyone has that choice of, of mm -hmm. what they, they fall into. But I just know like so far that you have those little influences uh, and that even being so young that you can pick up on those things and that's that's really cool yeah she's definitely gonna grow up around that type of atmosphere uh, i grew up watching my dad play video games and playing video games like with my dad and my stepmom and my brothers so it was like video games were not just an individual thing it was a family affair uh, i know yeah. some people think that video games are not they don't bring people together that we see a lot of negativity and stuff online but I've witnessed it as a family thing. We all played together and it was structured times and things like that. So it wasn't, hey, just go play play Nintendo for eight hours a day and then go to sleep. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, Thursday night is game night. This week is Mario Party 64 um, or something like that. Or I can't wait for the day that maybe she asks me if she could create a character in World of Warcraft. Uh, one of our guildies... Syra, which you you know, Cy, um, he was yep. also a podcaster, and I podcasted with him. His son just started playing World of Warcraft with us oh, um, not too long ago, and he jumped into the raid scene with us, and he's like really taken to it, and he's pumping, trying to put some effort in, trying to get um, the best parses that he can, and it's just it's great to see that kind of continuation. That's so cool. Uh, one of my friends in the the Warcraft content creation streamer verse uh Dimitrinov. uh she's always mm -hmm. talking fondly about how she is playing overwatch 2 with her son as well and how her son is teaching her how to play certain characters and things i just think that's so great like being a parent and being able to bond with your child over video games and if you know if that is something you feel passionate about that it's just it's just an, an incredible feeling and i guess on that uh, because you just mentioned your family as well i'm just wondering do you have any early video game memories like what does, is there an early video game memory that you can fish out there uh, and share with us i have a few my dad always playing mario kart on the original super nintendo with like i think he had friends that would come over and they would all take turns doing time trials and they would compete to see who could get the best time trial on like the same maps over and over and over again and years later down the line, I met when I have my studio apartment for the first time, two of my friends are over and we're playing Mario Kart 64 time trials competing to see who can get the best times. And it's just it was pretty crazy that it came full circle. Um, yeah. But mainly my dad was a big strategy game fan. So I always remember him playing strategy games, whether there's a pretty crazy risk game on playstation one very in-depth it's like think of like civilization but turned up a little bit and it's risk i was like man he's always playing this and then i tried to play it with him and he just completely destroyed me <laughs> no <laughs> mercy there no mercy there but yeah i think that watching him play warcraft 2 on the playstation one was very formative in my like 
my brain that was like wow like that looks so cool and i remember the sounds like all the time just hearing like like zug, zug. <laughs> like the first time you hear those or um i remember it was the first time that i had ever really heard a reference to somebody like trying to kill somebody or something i think it's like one of the trolls that like whenever you clicked on it it's like who oh, you want me kill and it's like oh okay <laughs> i'm like this is this is severe you know <laughs> back in the 90s and that is like almost your entry to World of Warcraft because I think games like that, like the early Warcraft games, almost set the scene for people to get into World of Warcraft eventually. I wasn't somebody that played the original Warcraft games, but I know that so many people went from playing maybe Warcraft or Warcraft 2 and definitely Warcraft 3 and then getting the continuation of that story in World of Warcraft. So those early moments as well. And I know that you are a big strategy game fan. I, I made the joke earlier that, that we wouldn't be talking about StarCraft. And I, I know you're a big lover of StarCraft. And I'm sure those early days seeing strategy games being played, like that's that stuff sticks with you because when you are a kid, you're you're a sponge, right? Mm -hmm. You're just like absorbing these things. Then one day you look back and you're like, oh what's that feeling? Oh, it's nostalgia. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I love playing strategy. I'm not the best at strategy games, but I really enjoy playing them. I remember seeing StarCraft 64 for the first time, and you're hearing me say consoles because we didn't have a home computer at the time. So back in the day, they released some of these games on PlayStation and N64, and while it wasn't the ideal way to play, for people like me, it was eye-opening to see something like this. Like, whoa, Like, what is this game? How are you even controlling it? What are all those noises? What are these units doing? You're controlling a whole army? That's pretty darn cool. Um, the first computer that I ever had was one that I built, and it was in 2010, I believe, 2009. And it was strictly so I could play StarCraft II. Nice. Yeah, 100% so I could play StarCraft II. And then from there, I played everything else. I didn't even play World of Warcraft until I listen to the blue recluse which was you and marty at the time sorry about that <laughs> yeah it's your fault i remember it i bought i think it was it was legion was about to pop off uh about to come out is the end of warlords and i just bought the game had a boost and i boosted up a warlock and had no idea what the heck i was doing and i wrote into you guys and i was like hey i just boosted this warlock what should i do and you guys were like create a new character <laughs> <laughs> in some ways we were like your wow daddy at that moment pretty much nurturing you and getting you into the game and making sure that you were you were okay and then you were ready to set off on your own and it is interesting just how things go full circle like that like you say with regards to your childhood and then as you get older as well and i think it's just really nice to have those memories and moments as well and and like you say there is negativity associated with video games a lot of the time but for me, and I know you and a lot of my friends, that video games is something that's brought us together, mm -hmm. that we share passionately about, that we talk about, we even make podcasts about. And for me, it just elevates it onto a different level. And I, I know that without video games, like my life would be, be totally different. I think it would be a little bit more boring, to be honest. Let's bring this back to World of Warcraft mm -hmm. before we finish up here. So. Now that you're on a bit of a, a tighter schedule, what does your like World of Warcraft play session look like now, typically? It, it's usually stuff that I can do in short intervals. Uh, I can't wing a Mythic Plus because that's 30 minutes to 45 minutes, possibly, um, of time that might get interrupted. Uh, so I can't really do that. So when I log in, it's maybe a couple arenas in PvP. I like doing PvP. This this is the first time in Dragonflight that I have like a full set of PvP gear. Uh, nice, same here actually. High five. Yes. Uh, I think it's like 424 gear or something like that uh, when you're in the arena. So I've been enjoying getting into that scene a little bit more. And then I raid on Wednesdays for whatever time I'm able to. So I'll jump in there. And if I just log in on a random day, I might you might find me going through um, artifact weapon quest lines uh, for alts in Legion content because I still can't get enough of those uh, class order halls and their quest lines. I think that Blizzard knocked it out the park when they did those, and I think everyone kind of agreed with that at the time. And I still enjoy going through them with new characters that I hadn't done so before. So that's pretty much what I, what I do now. I might quest a bit with the current content, 
catch myself up so I can get ready for whatever raid is about to come out. Raiding, PvP, and then just kind of old content on alts or even my main just to kind of go through some stuff and watch stuff fall over. <laughs> and I think that's something that I know I've been speaking to other people about Dragonflight is that we've been talking about how accessible it has been with its content no matter what you're into if it's pvp if it's pve if it's raiding if it's mythic if it's just flying around the world doing a few quests or doing some world quests everything is very much open and i think it's interesting to hear your point of view where you don't have like four or five hours to just go binge world of warcraft but there's still something there for you whether it's jumping into a quick arena game or like you say trying out the the mage tower or something like that and i think having these small little bits of content that you can bite mm -hmm. off and chew like i think it's easy to forget about those things that there are people out there that are players out there that maybe they have commitments or maybe they just can't play games for very long they you know it even being like in front of a computer for a long period of time i, I know i'm getting older and i i'm starting to struggle with that a bit <laughs> which is quite quite sad but also just knowing that there are little bits of content out there that make you feel fulfilled as well don't they like you say you've got the the pvp gear this season i know like that's something i've been enjoying just jumping in doing a, a couple of battlegrounds and i don't know i'm just getting like real satisfaction from mm. just cherry picking let's little bits around world of warcraft and i don't think i've ever really been in a situation like that before where i feel like there's just this big platter now and it's like oh i'll take a couple of those today or one of those and that it's just testament i think to how this expansion has come along where the walls are being knocked down and more people are just being able to access the content they want to be able to do i completely agree there's so much in the game we always hear that world of warcraft has so much content but then we usually pigeonhole ourselves into one or two things um, if you're a raider it's usually i just need to do mythic plus and raid and that's it uh, there's so much to do if you just kind of take a step back and take a look at it. Uh, a little bit of advice for anybody out there that may be in a situation as similar to mine, maybe you have a kid and you don't have as much time, um, is communicate with your significant other, if you have one, about like things that you are passionate about and you want to have time to do it, keep it reasonable, and then meet them on theirs as well. Encourage each other to do the things that you enjoy doing. As Tom mentioned, there's negativity in everything. There's, there's negativity no matter what community you're a part of, but there's also so much positive in so many different avenues. So do what you enjoy doing and enjoy doing it while you're doing it. But also keep it within reason. Understand that you're not going to put six hours of raiding in twice a week or something like that. Like Take a step back, um, enjoy your moments with your family, with yourself, however it is that you're doing it. And just have fun with it. Um, don't listen to all the negative things that are going on. If you enjoy it, then you enjoy it. That's the bottom line. That is some great bit of advice at the end of this episode. I couldn't put it better myself. And yeah, so thank you so much, Mike, for that, that piece of advice. And just for sitting down with me today, I know, like you say, your time is very limited and it's very precious, your free time. Uh, so I really do appreciate you joining me here in Talking Wow to talk some wow and it's been great to just sit sit back down with you on a podcast because i know it's been a few years since we've done that and it's just been like old times talking to you so thank you so much for being here and i look forward to making some time and getting you on again looking forward to it i always love talking with you guys about world of warcraft and i love that this was a positive themed episode as well sometimes the things we talk about can get pretty uh pretty dark and dirty so i enjoyed it being a positive experience this time around no problem. Those episodes are coming later, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> I'll be ready. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, champion. Did you enjoy this episode of Talking Wow? If so, why not drop a review on your podcast catcher of choice or leave us a comment? You can find Talking Wow on Twitter or YouTube over at Talking Wow. Hope to see you again soon.